Hey guys, I haven't posted in a few days because I didn't want to film pointless like little updates. I wanted to have like a whole cohesive video and also needed a break. I was posting so much and I know you guys were loving it and I was loving it too, but I didn't want to burn out and I feel like I've learned over the years that to avoid burnout you have to kind of like actually avoid it and not just treat it. So like take a break every now and then. It's good for you. If you can. If you can't, take like a 10 minute break. Make yourself a tea. Do a face mask. Anything, anything to get you out of like work, work mode. So today we're still talking about Michaela Naguero. I will have other topics soon, but this is just what's taken over my timeline. Every time I think it's done, she does more. Subscribe to the bell, like, comment for engagement, and let's just get into it. So Michaela has been, just gone back to like regular posting now, still hasn't addressed the scandal in like an actual cohesive, respectful manner. Like by respectful, I mean addressing that she messed up, addressing how she'll redeem herself, she just thinks it's a joke because her fans don't care. So why would she care? Also, a lot of people still don't think this is illegal. Like I, whenever I post a TikTok, people are like, mm, breaking the law? What do you mean? <laughs> You're so dramatic. I don't know, maybe like the FTC guidelines. Look it up. So she's gone back to posting. She's either posting get ready with me's or makeup reviews, that kind of a thing. Uh, I'll get into her going to Wyoming soon. Um, kind of later on in the video. In some of her videos, people are still, you know, making jokes. I do think she is restricting comments in some way. I think she's definitely maybe limited the words that you can use on TikTok. I do see her kind of going down that route. I think it's an easy route for her. She most likely went into, on TikTok, you can restrict certain words that people won't be able to use in your comment. So they'll leave the comment and they think that they've left the comment, but YouTube will filter that out based on that word. I think definitely like L'Oreal Telescoping Mascara would be in there. Um, mascara Gate, Lash Gate, FTC guidelines. Like I'm sure she's added some things into her restricted comments thing that mean that people can't leave those comments. Is that alleged? Yeah, that's just me alleging that that's what she did. So I don't see many comments, and when I do, they seem kind of like they haven't used specific words, like they kind of like slipped through the cracks. I don't know if you guys remember when this whole mascara gate, lash gate situation happened, a lot of people made statements, and I'll talk about that in a minute, uh, but one brand in particular that I found really funny for making a statement was Ardell, like the Wispies, Ardell Wispies brand, Ardell False Lashes. I keep on scratching myself here because something's really itchy, sorry guys. So Ardell made a TikTok basically making fun of the drama, It seems like, obviously, I don't think that Michaela necessarily used Ardell, maybe she did, but um, it just looked like Ardell Wispies, everyone made fun of like, oh, we know an Ardell Wispy when, when we see one, you know, like, it was funny. And Ardell came in on the joke, I thought it was funny, but clearly Michaela took some offence to that. Someone in her recent TikTok said, the Ardell Wispies look great here, girl, and she said, kiss lashes over Ardell. So she's clearly being like, I don't like Ardell, I like kiss, which... Kiss and Ardell are two competing false lash brands in the drugstore. I think if you go to the drugstore and you're looking for false lashes, you're most likely going to either pick up the Ardells or the Kiss lashes. Like, they are at the same price point, look very similar. Like, most of the styles are somewhat, like, interchangeable. So you're either an Ardell wearer or you are a Kiss wearer. You might be wearing both if you don't care, but they are definitely competing brands in the drugstore. It's obviously very interesting that she's now being like, Kiss over Ardell. Like... Maybe it's because Ardell shaded her and Kiss didn't. Someone said, what lashes are you using? And she went, Kiss Ruffle. What mascara are you using? Or is it just the falsies? She said, Kiss Ruffle. Someone also said, me avoiding my problems. That all is good and well. I'm also so disappointed in going into the comment section and seeing massive creators leaving comments being like, oh my God, Michaela's back. Or like supporting her not taking accountability. I do think it's interesting that it's all TikTokers supporting her. Like there is definitely a divide of like, there are some TikTokers that are not supporting her and some YouTubers that are supporting her. But as a general rule of thumb, I'd say most YouTubers are not supporting Michaela in this endeavor. Like they're obviously not like coming out with pitchforks and being like, cancel her. But it's definitely YouTubers calling her out more and TikTokers defending her because TikTokers for some reason either don't want to comply with the FTC guidelines or don't know about the FTC guidelines. So they're very, I think because the career is very like new, they haven't had the time to adjust to like laws and regulations and they don't know about them. They don't know how serious it is until something happens and someone gets like punished for it. Like I don't think they'll know. So I do see a trend of like TikTok is defending Michaela because they're most likely doing the same thing. So they don't see a big deal in this. Whereas YouTubers have been around for sometimes a decade. So they've been through all the issues, all the FTC guidelines, the progressions. So they're definitely being a lot more like critical of Michaela and definitely seeing a, you know, a, a, a difference there. And it is interesting how many big 
TikTokers commented on her TikToks basically being like, oh my god, I love how unbothered you are, like I'm so glad you're back. You know, it's just a bit ridiculous at this point. Talking about YouTubers that have called her out, Funny enough, are we really bringing the drama Drama-Geddon back? Because Tati Westbrook addressed this in her video called Let's Talk, Lashgate and Confronting Scammers. And it was with her husband, she was just going over like the Tarte brand trip. She talks about brand trips that she has been on and why she doesn't go on brand trips anymore because they just feel like a lot like work rather than a holiday, which is what I said about the Tarte brand trip. I feel like the TikTok girlies that went to the Tarte brand trip treated it like a holiday and not a work event so they ended up barely using Tarte products, barely talking about Tarte products, they literally just treated it as a holiday to Dubai whereas it was supposed to be a work trip where you mentioned Tarte, you use Tarte, you don't just get to like use the products that you want to use, like you should be contributing to Tarte and once again it just feels like the YouTube people just knew how to work more like i feel like for some reason it feels like almost a generational divide and i'm never like that person that's like the younger generation is just so lazy because like we're all the same age michaela's older than me right like this isn't actually a generational thing i think it's more like a like a platform thing i think youtubers are so much more hardworking. not all of them i feel like it's so much more difficult to grow on youtube blow up on youtube create youtube content like it is so much more difficult and i i, I think TikTok is easier to create content, but it's also easier to blow up. I've had so many TikToks now on one, two, three million views. And on my YouTube channel, it's, you know, a handful of videos. Because it's so difficult to get to that point. And it's so difficult to get subscribers and get into the algorithm. Like people grind for years before they even do anything. Whereas on TikTok, you could really, I challenge you guys, you could post one TikTok a day for a month and one of them will hit a million views. Like TikTok's algorithm is just very different, but that does mean that the substance of the followers is slightly different. Like I think a million subscribers on YouTube versus a million followers on TikTok is a very different audience based on like loyalty, etc, etc. Anyway, so I see a divide there where YouTubers are definitely treating this more like a job, whereas TikTok is treating them more like a privilege, kind of like a, oh, I'm famous now. I, I get to get away with things. I don't know, that's just kind of how I see it. I definitely do think there are TikTokers that work really, really hard and they're probably doing extra things kind of outside of their work, but I do see a lot of TikTok influencers just not really doing much. A lot of like the ex-Hype House people, like I feel like Charlie and Dixie, they definitely went out and did other businesses, you know, Dancing with the Stars and Clothing Line with Hollister and all of this stuff. And they did a lot of stuff. Addison Rae did Item Beauty. Like, I feel like a lot of the big, big, big TikTokers worked hard outside of just TikTok, but then like a lot of the people around the like five to ten million follower mark, they literally just keep on doing the same TikTok content. They don't really do extra stuff. They don't sell stuff. They don't create stuff. I don't know. I think there is a divide between the platforms, and that definitely shows in the work ethic. I don't know. You guys, let me know what you think. I feel like I'm trying to explain a concept here that is making me sound like I'm very mean towards TikTokers. I love TikTok as a platform. It's great. I just see a bit of a difference in the work ethic between the two platforms. And that's not to say that YouTubers are perfect. There are so many YouTubers that mess up and don't put in any effort and yet yeah, 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 whatever. But I just think there is a big difference between being a YouTuber and being a TikToker. And I think, yeah, that's that. <laughs> um, so it's really interesting to see Tati, someone who's an OG YouTuber, talk about this and kind of say what I'm saying, but just in like a nicer way. She used to post every single day. Like every single day she would post. She released makeup, she released makeup products like the Blenderful, she released Halo Beauty. She probably made a lot of investments. She went, you know, to a lot of meetings, did a lot of business deals. Yeah, yeah, like I think Tati's a great example. Whether you think she's problematic or not, or whatever it is, I've done my videos on Tati criticizing her myself. But regardless of all of that, I think Tati's a hard worker. And that's not something that I can say about a lot of TikTokers necessarily. So it's very interesting of her to be like, yeah, I stopped going to brand trips because they felt like extra work on top of already my workload when I could have just taken the week off and gone to an actual holiday. Just super privileged, like I wish that was me. I would take that brand trip in a minute. But when you're someone like Tati, I, I definitely understand the want to just take a break. Like instead of having to socialize for a week, you know? She also talks about how she's not a big fan of the L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara, which <laughs> is convenient for this whole thing. They also discuss the scammers on YouTube. I also want to touch, touch not touch, touch on that very quickly. If you see someone being like, Angelica Telegram, commenting under your comments, being like, hey, message me on Telegram, I'm Angelica Olds and I'm doing a giveaway. No, that's not me. I keep on trying to report these people and I like block them from my channel, but when I delete one, 10 new ones appear. So please click on the account and make sure that it's me that you're socializing with. Like if you click on the account, you'll see if it's me or not. I'm not doing a giveaway. Um, and I probably won't just because of these scammers, like that's really, difficult but like I definitely wouldn't do it on YouTube because it's just so 
difficult. And YouTube is probably having a really hard time cracking down on these scammers. And it's not just an issue with Tati, like everyone's going through this right now. You can go on anyone's channel and those accounts will be there being like, hey, message me on Telegram. I don't have a Telegram. I really don't, and I'm not doing a giveaway right now, so sorry to announce. So yeah, there's a lot of that happening on YouTube, to be fair. Michaela also went to Wyoming with Glow Recipe, which she has worked with in the past, which is a skincare brand. Get ready with me to go to Wyoming. I gotta make sure my man's not actually there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just with you. I am going to Wyoming, but with Glow Recipe. Oh no, I with Glow Recipe, okay. I'm gonna start with the Avocado Redness Serum. We do kind of got to work quick. It's 6.30 a.m. I got to get to the airport for 8 a.m. In the heat of filming the video, I forgot to mention the main point that I was trying to make with this TikTok. And it's that um, she shades Jeffrey in this. I'm so dumb. I literally just forgot to mention the main point of the video. Because uh, I was just going off on tangents. Uh, essentially, Jeffree Star posted a picture with an NFL player that he's secretly seeing. And everyone's like saying that the back of the head of this NFL player looks like Cody. And they were wondering if Cody is hooking up with Jeffrey, which obviously isn't true. It was just a funny haha -ha theory. But Michaela addresses this haha -ha theory at the beginning of this video, which fuels the further like Jeffrey Star and Michaela beef going on, kind of. And they're going to discuss Jeffrey Star's like, little NFL situation. He's always trying to like act like he's seeing some. Oh, not my problem. What I was going to address is this Michaela Jeffrey beef. And there were a lot of people there, Alex Earl, all of that stuff. I'm not going to fully discuss the reason why people are really calling her out, which is that she looks very different in real life and in unpost pictures than she does in her pictures and that she uses a lot of filters, a lot of facial, a lot of Photoshop. I've already discussed all of that. And I think a lot of people are being very fat phobic and a lot of people are being very derogatory with the way that they talk about the situation. And I think there is a more civilized way to talk about this which is that Michaela is a victim of the beauty standards but she is also enforcing the beauty standards on other people so I think every you can be a victim and a perpetrator at the same time with this she feels the need to face tune and photoshop and make her face and her body look different because of the very strict beauty standards for women but by her face tuning photoshopping her face and her body she is also perpetrating those beauty standards on other people. So you can be a victim and a perpetrator at the same time, and that's all I have to say about that. We then have, obviously because she went to Wyoming, um, people are also calling out the fact that she's lying again because she said that her boyfriend, well, fiance's, Cody, um, Cody's family's from Nevada ages ago. She said they were from Nevada and that she knows that, she, that he misses them. But now she said that his family's from Wyoming and that they're going to like see his family in Wyoming. So. Some people are calling that a lie. Now, I'm not sure if maybe she's talking about the same sides of the family. Maybe one side of the family is from Nevada and the other side of the family is from Wyoming. I'm going give to give, give her the benefit of the doubt because a lot of people have two sides of the family that are from two different areas. So maybe one side of the family is from Nevada, like she said, and then another side of the family is from Wyoming. If not, she is lying, but I, I'm, I'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt on this one. Also, because she's in Wyoming, Jeffree Star posted this. All right, y'all, I'm just going to say it once. Yes, I see your thousands and thousands of tags that Michaela is in Wyoming. I'm sure she's had that brand trip planned for a long time. Jackson Hole is like six hours away from the Star Yak Ranch, but I reached out. I invited her to the ranch. I said, let's do a, let's do something together. Let's try the L'Oreal mascara on camera or will the contract not allow it? Um, she's seen it and she has not responded yet. Where he invited her to try the telescopic mascara and I don't like that Jeffree Star has made it come back to the internet. Um, I think it gives Michaela an out to say that, well, you know, there are more problematic people on the platform because that is true. Jeffree Star is objectively a more problematic person than Michaela ever can be, but that doesn't, I hate that he's come back because now that is an excuse for her to be able to get away with what she did, whereas I think she should still be held accountable for what she did. The comments under Jeffrey's TikTok are saying, I love Michaela, but I'm living for this. Jeffrey is the best. He really isn't. Then someone said, I feel like she'd love to, but her team will keep her away. And he said they already have in the past broken heart. So he has tried to make content with her before. And I'm assuming her team has said no because of how problematic he is, which is, I think, a great decision from them. And then disappointingly so, Sky Jackson, who played on Disney Channel ages ago, said, yes, Jeffrey, we want Miss Girl at the ranch. Like, why are you defending a alleged criminal? What's going on? Another thing that I've recently been reminded of by Petty Page on YouTube, which is something that I actually followed when I was still kind of a fan, that is a very strong word, when I was still consuming Michaela's content before her controversy. I remember this happening and I didn't really have too much of an opinion on it because I just didn't, it was just passive content that I was watching. But thanks to Petty Page, I've just been reminded, Michaela was called out in the past for affecting 
uh, an indie brand's sales. So there is this content creator called Yolando Salmon. I hope that's how you pronounce it. And she is an MUA and a makeup brand owner. And she has this like eyeshadow palette that went viral for the swatches that you're able to do. So she has this like nude soft glam eyeshadow palette, mainly intended for medium to deeper skin tones, which is obviously a lot less accessible common um, with kind of mainstream makeup brands. This is obviously amazing. And she has this one iconic shade in the palette that people swatch and it creates like a long line of a swatch. It just goes to show how like pigmented the palette is and that it will work on deeper skin tones because if it can have this much pigment to swipe for ages that means it will have a lot of pigment on the eyeballs. And these videos had like 5 million views which is obviously insane for a like indie makeup brand. This will really amplify your sales. So Michaela bought this eyeshadow palette when she saw this TikTok like everyone else and she ended up basically in like the first 10 seconds of the video saying oh I've heard like through the grapevine essentially that um, she uses Vaseline to enhance her swatches and then she tries to like imitate the swatch but it looks like she presses really hard to get like a short swatch. I bought that immediately. Hey, don't quote me on this. Apparently she uses Vaseline when she does those long swatches to make it do that. Like the way it does with hers because it doesn't have the Vaseline. So it kind of, I don't know why she would go out of her way to make the palette look worse than it is when there are so many people that have shown that you can get these really long swatches. I think with most high quality shimmers you can get a really long swatch like if you get a really pigmented eyeshadow palette you can do that kind of a swatch if you just swell around a few times in the pan and then just lightly press so that you don't deposit all the pigment at the beginning you kind of spread it out more so i don't know why she would press so hard to get it off in the first go some people are saying it's because she has collabed twice with Glamlight, who are like a direct competitor to brands like this. I'm not saying that Glamlight like saw this brand and were maybe like threatened. Glamlight are known for super high pigments and like high performance. So maybe um, Michaela felt like she needed to almost shut down another brand to keep up Glamlight. But that seems like such a stretch and such a reach. Like I just don't know if she would do that because that just sounds so like, she would have to do that to like every eyeshadow brand. That feels ridiculous. I don't know why she did that. Maybe she just didn't know how to use this eyeshadow palette. I don't know. But since then, the owner of this brand has basically said that she has gotten nothing but criticism from Michaela fans, constantly demanding that she prove to them that the palette works the way it works. She has literally done nothing since then, essentially, but just keep on making more videos proving that her eyeshadow palette does perform the way that she says it performs. And there are also other people that have been sent to the palette that also are being like questioned about it, being like, prove to us that it works the way like Michaela said it doesn't. Don't go like the way it does with hers because it doesn't have the Vaseline. It's ridiculous, honestly. And she also said that in a TikTok, I'll post it for you guys now, that Michaela really affected her sales. You heard it in my business. And this is what I keep on have to be doing so people can see that you are the liar and not me. I didn't use Vaseline. It was that easy to swash. You know you're wrong for that. You know your name. That is really sad to see that Michaela would review an indie brand but then affect the indie brand sells negatively instead of positively when we know that Michaela can sell out a product like this. There are also a few other people that have addressed the like ad disclosing 
brand deal situations. Like Robert Beauty Christie and Robert Welsh have both kind of from the perspective of YouTube influencers have addressed how to legally and in a compliant way make ads on the internet. And that's not just exclusive to YouTube, like every platform that you make this content on, you have to disclose properly, which Michaela didn't do. Other than just putting on the false lashes on, which is like strike number one, uh, she also didn't disclose properly, which a lot of these MUAs are now addressing. So that's everything so far on Michaela. This video is a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. But yeah, subscribe, leave a like, comment for engagement. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.